Ren Ng. I'm the founder and CEO of Lytro. Uh, and Lytro is a startup company in Mountain View. We recently introduced a fundamentally new kind of camera to the consumer market that takes a new kind of picture and opens up new artistic possibilities. So I'd like to tell you some stories about the intersection of that science and art. But that theme really has gone all the way back to the very beginning of photography. So first, I'd like to rewind with you right to the very beginning and tell you some stories there, too. In 1839, Louis Dagar gave birth to photography. His discovery was that if you took a silver plate and if you fumed it with uh, iodine, it would become optically sensitive and you could fix an optical picture onto it permanently. This scientific breakthrough began photographic art for all of us. And people loved his camera right away. They used it for all kinds of new artistic possibilities. Scenery, still lives. They even tried to use it for portraiture. Of course they did, because everybody wanted pictures of people that they loved. But this first camera was not very sensitive to light. The exposure time was measured in minutes, not fractions of seconds. And so when you tried to take a portrait, you'd have to go to a special studio and sit in a special chair that had an iron collar at the neck to help you keep your head immobilized for minutes on end. And they found that subjects would have to close their eyes, too, because it's hard to keep your gaze from wandering uh, while the shot is being made when it's so long. The second big step came a couple years later, in 1841. Joseph Petzval introduced a new lens. You can see in the picture here how much larger it is. It brought it light into the camera 16 times more rapidly than anything before. This was a mathematically computed lens. He computed it over six months using actually eight bombardiers, men from the Austrian army that were skilled in calculating the trajectory of artillery shells. And they computed for six months together to, compute, to create this new design. And once again, this scientific breakthrough opened all kinds of new artistic possibilities. It allowed real portraiture, where people could open their eyes and take off their iron collars, and the pictures just came alive. This kind of theme of the intersection of science and art, this progression at every stage from scientific breakthrough to the next stage of artistic possibilities, has happened throughout the history of photography, from, fi uh, from plate cameras through to film cameras, from film to digital. At every juncture, new scientific breakthroughs enabling new artistic possibilities. But one thing has remained constant in all of these cameras, from Degar through to the digital cameras that we all love today. And that is that at the end of the day, these all collect the same data. Fundamentally, they collect the same 2D photograph. For the next big stage in uh, cameras, it's really about collecting an entirely new kind of data a fundamentally richer kind of data that will open breakthrough capabilities for cameras and our visual storytelling, and that will enable the next set of artistic applications all over again. This new kind of data is something called a light field. The light field was introduced at Stanford in the mid-1990s by two professors in computer graphics. The definition of the light field is the set of all light rays moving in the world, so every ray traveling in every direction at every point in space. To study the light field, they build very large camera systems, 100 cameras in a grid, literally a room full of cameras plugged into a supercomputer to study the light field. This was the lab environment. This was the intellectual setting in which I started my PhD with these two professors uh, working to study the theory of the light field. But in my spare time, I was just taking lots of pictures. I love photography. With my first camera in 2003, my first digital camera, I was taking thousands of pictures, mostly of rock climbing. All my best friends are rock climbers. And a, a portraiture, uh, stemming from the kind of contributions that stem all the way back to Petzval. I love candid portraits. To capture just the right moment, to capture someone's emotion in a way that tells their story, that's something that uh, would uh, captivate me to find that decisive moment. This picture on the right was a very special one for me because if you look closely at this picture, it's captured at the right moment. She's smiling, a great smile after she picked her head up after tumbling. But it's actually not focused correctly. It's focused a little bit behind her head if you look deep into this picture as I did in 2003. And because it's not focused on her face, the twinkle in her eyes is a little bit blurry. And this picture made me start asking some questions, like, why do cameras have to be focused before you take the picture? And from the study of the light field, I felt that if we could collect the whole light field, there was an intuition from this theory 
that said that maybe we could break this focus problem. So what does the light feel inside the camera? Well, think of a lens and think of a sensor and think of the rays of light flowing through the camera to burn into the sensor to make a photograph. This is the light feel. So once again, here it is. The rays of light come through, they refract through the lens, burn into the sensor, and make a 2D picture. The concept in light field photography is that if we could capture the light field itself, not just the photograph, but the source rays of light and which direction they're going when they strike the sensor, then we'll have a lot of new information that is lost. With this vector information, to try to focus at a different depth means to say, well, what if the sensor were at a greater depth? That means physically that it would be focused closer. You can see where the rays would have tra traversed to, where they would have projected onto that plane. And to focus further in the world, the sensor plane would be here. So you have the information, and you can see the pattern of rays and how, much, how dramatically it will change over the sensor surface. So it is this extra vector information that provides this capability. And to capture this information, we use an entirely new kind of sensor, a light field sensor that has a micro-optics layer that goes right in front of the sensor surface, and that when the rays of light strike it, it separates them out and preserves that vector information which is lost in a regular 2D picture. So with that concept for a light field camera, I began with simulation. So how do we simulate a camera that could focus at different depths? And lo and behold, the computer simulation actually using the same computational ray tracing techniques that Petzval used all the way back in 1841, except now in much larger number, and with computers, of course, it showed that, wow, you'd be able to actually fix the focus in pictures after you took them. That gave the confidence to build a prototype, first on an optical bench, and then a second generation prototype, one that you could hold in your hands. And this was the camera that I used to go take the first light field pictures outside of the laboratory setting. And these pictures show that it's true. You can change the focus and fix focus problems after you've taken the shot by collecting this kind of information. But the thing that I discovered right away when taking these pictures was that it's not so much about the technical contribution, which is great, the ability to fix problems, which is great. It's actually about the new artistic possibilities which are enabled by these kinds of scientific breakthroughs. This is one of the pictures, uh, one of the very first pictures that I took uh, after building the camera, and this is in 2004. It's a picture of my friend Alex, one of my climbing buddies. And you can see, you know, he's kind of got his fingers out in front of his face as I take the picture of him. He's kind of goofing off, and it's initially focused on his fingertips. And what I discovered was that when I showed him this picture later on, or if I showed it to any of our friends that knew both of us well, when they could discover this, you know, the expression on his face, there was a sensation of discovery that struck them viscerally, and they would exclaim. They'd say, whoa, what was that? So focusing from the fingers on the fingertips and now onto the face, right? Or another one, and you can see the goofy look in his eyes. It was this, this new kind of picture storytelling, a new way to tell a visual story through a single picture that has interactivity. This is what I felt was really the most important thing that came out of this step. When I graduated, I um, started a company, Lytro, and my goal was to take light fields, this scientific breakthrough, out of the research lab and make them available for everyone in the form of a consumer camera. After many years, the company has solved the technical issues required to get it from a research concept into a, a, a product form to make it commercializable, and the company has built up to 80 people in order to get this product out into the world. It takes a lot of people working together in order to get a new consumer electronics product out to market. And very recently, just a little over a month ago, we started shipping our first product, the world's first light field camera for consumers. And I have one right here. This beautiful little camera packs a tremendous amount of science and engineering into a tiny little form from the room full of cameras now into the, something that you can put in your pocket. The form is something which is very iconic. It says, you know, this is something that's really, truly new in cameras again. But very much it's driven by a form follows function design ethos. The entire front section of the camera is a lens. And I did this because as a passionate photographer with a bag of lenses that I would use out when rock climbing around in the field, I felt that if you could compress all of those bag, you know, the bag full of lenses into a single camera, this would be a terrific thing. And in fact, that's exactly what's going on in here. It's an eight times optical zoom. For those of you that are uh, camera buffs out there, it's about 35 to 300 millimeter equivalent that is F2 across the entire range, 
which means it brings a lot of light into the camera and onto the sensor surface. It's really an unprecedented thing in the market, uh, and it gives you a tremendous amount of artistic creativity, uh, uh, creative avenues for your artistry. If we look inside the camera, slice away, you can see what I'm talking about. The entire front section of that lens, you can see all the different lens elements in there. And you can see the light field sensor, where it collects those rays of light and preserves that vector information. And then there's a light field engine in here. This is the compu computational system that does the traversal of those rays that I talked about, that reprojection to focus directly on the camera so that you can focus on the back of the camera through a glass touchscreen. So this is the science inside uh, this little camera. Now, thinking back and remembering the picture of Alex and the emotional response of that sensation of discovery, it's not about building a camera so that you can fix focus problems. It's not about a technical fix for something that was broken. No, it's about enabling entirely new artistic possibilities. And we've worked very hard to build that into the software system that we've built for this camera. And so I want to show you some of the pictures in our software that are taken with some of our very first customers that have bought the very first light field cameras and that are out in the world taking the very first light field pictures. This is on the web. This is a picture that's been shared by one uh, of the first light field photographers of, it's a, it's a cloud of flowers. It's just a bush, but the photographer has taken opportunity for the ability to focus after the fact to entice you so you can click within the picture to see what you want to see. What's this over here? It's another one of these flowers. So a simple picture, but now coming alive in three dimensions as a three-dimensional composition. This person's taken a different approach. It's a tiny little diorama, right? A ti tiny little figurines. And by photographing this, you can say, oh, let's focus on the top of this little um, house here, or on this little figurine playing with this dog. Here's another picture. What is that? It's enticing you to want to look in the picture. And what is it? It's a, it's a string of, um, of little model airplanes. Or here's another one of a little parking lot. And you can explore the little trees. Or what's this figurine doing down here? Oh, clipping the hedges. Here's another one I like. This person's playing with nature. It's a tiny little scene taken with the, uh, the macro kind of capabilities of this camera. It's a cricket climbing a leaf. And if we look in here, you can see the individual veins in the leaf when we refocus there. Or here, you can actually see the curvature of the leaf on itself. And what's this in the background? Once again, inviting you to take a look. And it's another cricket in the background. I love this picture. Here's another one. It's an abstract kind of a scene. You know, it's a reflection of the sky, I think, in a puddle. But what is going on here? There's something here that you're being invited to take a look at. Oh, <laughs> it's a spider in a web over the puddle. Last little picture for you. This is one I took uh, of a bee. And you can see it's focused on this flower here. And the bee is busy uh, getting at the pollen in here. And if you click in here and focus on it, you can actually see some of the pollen dust on its back. So pictures that really, by composing now in a new way, you can take advantage of these new artistic possibilities to tell visual stories in a way that couldn't be done before. Light field uh, cameras have amazing capabilities, many of them. Focusing after the fact is one. Another is that every shot taken with this camera, every shot taken with a light field camera is inherently three-dimensional. So I'm going to show you this uh, in a different kind of a demo that is not in the software for the product today, but that is inherently uh, uh, captured in every shot from the camera today and that will come out in the future as we release this kind of software. This is a bird that I took um, in Japan a number of years ago in a, park, uh, in a park. And if we had a 3D projector here and you could wear glasses, what you would see is that we can make this bird in full stereo just like you see in the movies. But since we don't have that, there are other ways that we can see 3D that are completely unique to light field technology, which is that we can actually change, we can actually change the viewpoint in this scene all from this single shot. Let me show you some more pictures. This is a larger scene. It's of a crowd of people. We can focus from the back through to the foreground to this chair here to this waiter here. We can make everything in focus at the same time if we like. And once again here, we can change the viewpoint in this scene. And I love this because you can see down this corridor of chair legs. It's like a tunnel. 
Or here's another example. To go from a large scene in 3D, but now to one that's tiny, just by zooming the camera and getting close, now it's a restaurant tabletop, and you can go from the back, you can focus continuously back and forth through the scene, if you like. You can make everything in focus at the same time. And if you look at these two droplets of water here, as I change the viewpoint, you can actually see the overhead light refracting through that droplet of water. So hopefully this gives you a visceral sense for just how much has changed in the kind of information that we're collecting. Focusing pictures after they're taken, 3D from a single shot, changing the view like in a hologram, impossible things made possible by light fields. In fact, light fields bring all the power of computational photography to bear to enrich our visual storytelling. And what do I mean by computational photography? It's simply the intersection of computer graphics and photography. My two passions. It's the intersection of the scientific study of light, on the one hand, with the artistry of picture making, on the other. You're seeing an industry at its infancy. You're getting a peek into something that will grow into a giant and that will revolutionize both computer graphics and photography. This is a tremendously exciting time to be working at the intersection of science and art. And I believe that when we look back on this in the future, we're entering a period that will be viewed as one of the richest periods for innovation in cameras, in software, and in visual storytelling. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ron, that was perfect.